Hey guys, I'm T, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today's sweater tutorial is a double dose of firsts. Starting with my first time using the Marguerite stitch, which I'm digging, and my first time making a new collar I'm equally pleased with. Smiles all around. Speaking of, if you're looking to make something that'll make you smile, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns for all tastes, which are even more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 545 grams of yarn, and that's 1100 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us how often you find hair woven into your projects. Surprisingly, it's actually not as often as you would think for me, but it definitely does happen. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using four stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, double crochet, and marguerite stitch. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the sweater started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 6mm hook. Then make an odd number chain from the top of our shoulder down to where we'd like the bottom of the sweater to be, so you can make this cropped or full length. I would like for mine to be full length, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 73, so that's 21 inches or 53 centimeters for me. So now that we have our chain, we're going to get started in our first row, which is a marguerite stitch or a modified star stitch. But really quickly, I did look up how to do this, and I've seen some people call it the regular star stitch as well. So if you see this and you like it, but you have something else that you call it, let me know in the comments. But what we're all going to do from here is block off that last chain and do a chain three. So there's one, there's two, there's three. That chain three doesn't count as any of our stitches. What we're all going to do is pull up five loops. So we're gonna start with a yarn over. Inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook, we're gonna be working into the back bumps. So this is my first chain, this is my second. Into that second, go ahead and insert yarn over and pull through for three loops on our hook. Then we need to pull up two more loops, so into that following chain we're going to pull up another loop. So insert your hook into that next chain's back bump, pull through for four loops on our hook, then we're going to pull up a fifth loop, but how we're going to do this is skip that following chain and then into the chain right after that one, so this one right here, we're going to insert yarn over and pull through. Now we should all have a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and then to finish off this cluster we're going to chain one. Now that is our first marguerite stitch cluster and we should all have two stitches so far for this row. So there's one and there's two. Let's do this again. Now that's going to be how we always do our first marguerite stitch right after our chain. Now we're going to do our second marguerite stitch, so what we're going to do from here is yarn over. We're going to need to pull up five loops again, but now we're going to start with into the back bump of that chain that we just did to close off our previous marguerite stitch. So as you guys can see, this is my back bump right here. After I did my yarn over, I'm going to insert my hook into that back bump of that chain and pull through for three loops on our hook. 
Then we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch that our previous Marguerite stitch was worked into. So this is mine right here. That stitch will be occupied. We're just going to insert our hook into that stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook. And always whenever we have four loops on our hook, we need to pull up five again. We're going to skip that following stitch and then into the next, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then just like how we did our previous run, we're going to yarn over, pull through all five. And then to close off our Marguerite stitch, we're all going to chain one. Now we should all have two Marguerite stitch and a total of one, two, three, four stitches for this row so far. Let's do one more together. Now this is our third Marguerite stitch. It's going to be done exactly the same way as the second one. So getting that started again, we're going to yarn over. Inserting your hook into the back bump of that chain that we made will be closed off that last Marguerite stitch. We're going to insert our hook in through there and pull through for a total of three loops on our hook. Then into the last stitch that our previous Marguerite stitch was worked into. So that occupied stitch, we're gonna insert our hook in through there, pull through for a total of four loops. And remember, like I said, whenever we have four loops on our hook, we need to pull up a fifth one. So we're going to skip that following stitch and then into the one right after that, insert, yarn over, and pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then to finish it off, yarn over, pull through all five, then chain one to finish off our third Marguerite stitch. Let's do just one more a little bit quicker. So what we're going to do, yarn over and start by inserting your hook into the back bump of that chain that we just made. So insert, pull through into the last stitch that our previous Marguerite stitches worked into. So into that occupied stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, then skip a stitch and then into the next, insert, yarn over, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all five of those loops. And then to finish off this, chain one, and that's it. We're all going to continue to do this until we have two chains left. And if you need timestamps for any of these stitches, they will all be linked in the description. Alrighty, so we are back. We have made our way all the way down with our Marguerite stitches and we should all have one, two chains left. Now we're going to do our last one, which is going to be done pretty much the same way as all of our other Marguerite stitches. The only difference is that we aren't going to close it off with a chain one. So all we're going to do again is yarn over. Insert your hook into the back bump of that last chain that we just did. Pull through. Insert your hook into that last stitch that our previous Marguerite stitch was worked into. Pull through for four loops on our hook. And since we still need five, we're going to insert our hook into the second stitch from our hook. So like all the other ones, we're going to skip that following stitch. And then into the next one, which should be our last, insert your hook in through there. Yarn over and pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all five. And now everyone's row one is complete. And just as a really quick tip, we should all have the same amount of stitches as chains that we made. Now for this portion of our piece, which is the shoulder portion, we're just going to continue on with this Marguerite row with absolutely no increases and no decreases. So now getting started on our row two, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to get started on every first Marguerite stitch. So what we're going to do is chain three and flip our work. So now that we have our chain three, we're going to do our first Marguerite stitch. So now getting started, we're all going to yarn over. We're going to insert our hook into the second chain from our hook. So skip that first into the next insert and pull through for three loops on our hook. Then insert your hook into that following chain that we have as well. Insert, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then from here, skip that following stitch. And then into the next, insert, pull through for again, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all five. And then after that Marguerite stitch, we're all going to chain one. Now this first one is complete. Let's do the next one again. 
Now our next one is going to be done pretty much the same way as all of our other marguerite stitches. So just getting that started, we're all going to yarn over. Insert your hook into the back bump of that last chain that we just made. So insert, pull through. Insert your hook into the last stitch that our previous marguerite stitch was worked into. Pull through, skip that following stitch, and then into the next, insert, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over and pull through all five of those loops. Then to finish off our marguerite stitch, chain one, and continue to do this marguerite stitch, making our way all the way down until we all have one stitch left. Now everyone's row two is nearly complete. We should all have just one stitch left. Now what we're going to do from here is the same last marguerite stitch that we finished our previous row off with. I'm going to show you where to insert your hook. So we're going to get started on this following marguerite stitch per usual. So yarn over, insert our hook into that back bump of that chain, pull through for three loops. Then into that last stitch that our previous marguerite stitch has worked into, and pull through for four loops, and from here, we're going to skip over that last stitch that we have. It is technically our last stitch, but if we work straight into there, our work may start to slant just a little bit. So what we're going to do is just find that little gap that we have in between our last stitch and that chain three that we made when we started off our previous row and just insert your hook in through there. So like I said, skip that last stitch into that little gap, pull through for five loops on our hook, then yarn over and pull through all five. And that is the end of our row. Like I said, for the last marguerite stitch, we are not going to chain one, just like how we closed off all the other ones. From here, we're just going to automatically chain three, flip our work, and then repeat this row that we just did together. Let's just really quickly get the first two started off, and I'll let you do the rest of the section on your own. So to do our first one, we're all going to yarn over. Insert your hook into that second chain from your hook, pull through for three loops, into that next chain, Insert, pull through for four loops, skip that following stitch, into the next, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five, chain one to secure. Again, yarn over. Insert your hook into the back bump of that chain that we just did from our previous marguerite stitch, pull through into that last stitch that our previous marguerite stitch has worked into, pull through, skip a stitch, into the next, Pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all five, and finish off this marguerite stitch with a chain one. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat this marguerite stitch all the way down, remembering that the last one will never end with just a chain one, because we need this to end on the same odd number of chains that we made when we started this section off with. Now, like I said, what we're going to do is just continue to repeat our previous row with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we have a portion that reaches from two inches past the tip of our shoulder in until we reach the side of the base of our neck. Then I will meet you back right after an odd number row and then we can get started on the neckline from there. So I am back. I've just finished up the shoulder portion for my front panel. I have a total of 13 rows. This width is roughly six and a half inches or 16 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on our neckline. So what we're all going to do is insert our stitch marker into any even numbered stitch from the top. The top is going to be the end where our hook is not, so our hook should be along the bottom right now. And we're going to insert our stitch marker into the stitch that's right underneath our collarbone. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 22nd stitch from the top, and that's roughly 6 inches or 15 centimeters. And now from here, we're going to do the same marguerite stitch that we have been doing this entire time until we reach our stitch marker. My first neckline row is now complete. We're now going to insert a stitch marker into the top of this row, so I'm just going to use this stitch marker right here and insert it in through there just so we know where the beginning of our neckline starts. Now from here, we're going to do our regular marguerite stitch rows without any more increases or decreases for the width that we'd like for the base of our collar to be. So we're just going to chain one, two, three like we normally would, flip our work, and then do our marguerite stitch row all the way down. We're gonna continue to repeat this row that has absolutely no increases and no decreases until we all have the width that we'd like for the base of our collar to be. And when we have that, I'll meet you guys back along the top so we can finish up our front panel together. All right, so I am back. I have just finished up the neckline portion for my piece. Now I have a total of 18 rows. My width is roughly 
10 inches or 25 centimeters, or the width that I have for the base of my collar is just about three inches or eight centimeters. Now what we're going to do from here is our shoulder portion, and that's gonna be done pretty much the same way as the front one, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it. So we all should have ended right after an even number row or along the top. Now what we're all going to do from here is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. So for me, I skipped a total of 22 stitches. So on this side, I made a chain 22. Then from here, we're just going to do our marguerite stitches all the way down and just continue to do our marguerite stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as the first shoulder portion that we have on this side. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut. Alrighty, so we are back. The total width of my front panel is complete. I have a total of 31 rows. My width is roughly 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters. And now we're going to single crochet across the top of the entirety of our front panel, and then we'll move on to the back. So first things first, we're all going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of the front panel. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and start with a chain one, but that doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to secure. And what we're going to do from here is work into our side rows. So we're gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row until we reach this corner over here. So let's do the first few together. We're all gonna start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook and insert with just one single crochet. But for those of you that are like me and have a tail end right here and you don't wish to weave that in later, blow ahead and just place that over your hook and single crochet around everything. Now that is complete. We're going to work into our following side row, which is this side row right here. As you guys can tell, this is like little clusters. We're gonna find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So into that top loop, I'm going to insert, starting with one single crochet, and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Let's do this once more. This is my following side row. I'm gonna find that top loop, and insert with one single crochet, and then into my following side row, which is this one right here, into that top loop with two single crochets. So there's my first, and there's my second, and we're going to continue on with our single crochets until we reach this top corner stitch. So we've just single crocheted across the top of our shoulder portion, and once we do, we're all going to insert a stitch marker into that last stitch into the shoulder just so we know where this ends. Then from here, we're going to work down our neckline. These should be some regular stitches. So just put one single crochet into each of these rows until we reach our side row for the base of our collar. And just as a really quick tip, for this single crochet portion, we should end up with the same amount of stitches as chains that we made or chains that we skipped when we got started on the neckline. And those should be the same for both sides. All right, so we are back. We have just single crocheted down our neckline portion. Now from here, we're just going to work across the base of the collar, and just like how we did for the shoulder, we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. But the only difference with this one is that we're going to insert our stitch marker into the first and into the last stitch that we do. So just to do the first one together, we're gonna to find our first side row, and this is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with one single crochet, and then insert a stitch marker into that one single crochet, so that we know where the collar starts and ends. Then from here, finding our following side row, insert into that next side row with two single crochets and continue doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. All right, so we have just worked across the base of our collar. Now, like I said, we are going to insert a stitch marker into this last stitch on this side. And then from here, we're going to work our way up our neckline, putting one single crochet into every stitch. Again, it should be the same amount of stitches that we had on this side. All right, so we've made our way up our neckline and now we're just going to single crochet across the top of our shoulder the same way that we did on this side. So alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. I just wanted to meet you back to remind you that once when you put your first single crochet into that first side row, we're going to insert our stitch marker into that stitch to match this one over here. And then once we made our way all the way down, do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you back so we can start on the back panel. All righty, so we are back. Our single crochet row along the entirety of our front panel is complete. Now we're going to do the back panel, and the back panel is going to be super easy because we aren't going to have any of these cutouts. So all we're going to do is make the same chain that we made for the front panel, 
Then just do our marguerite stitch rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for the front panel, plus an additional two rows. So as an example, I have a total of 31 rows for my front panel, plus an additional two, so I will be doing a total of 33 rows for the back panel. Now the back panel is just going to be slightly bigger than the front panel, so that once when we seam it up, the neckline that we have is going to open up just a little bit like that. But once we have the back panel completed, do not do a chain up of one and cut because we're going to have to single crochet across the top of the back panel as well. So I am back. The entirety of my back panel is complete. I do have the same amount of rows as my front panel, plus the additional two, like I said we were going to do. And the total that I have is roughly 19 inches or 49 centimeters. Now from here, we're just going to single crochet across the top. So since we did not do a chain up of one and cut, all we're going to do is just alternate again between one to two single crochets into every side row. Once we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet back so we can seam everything together. Alrighty, so we are back. The entirety of our back panel plus our single crochet row across the top is complete. Now from here, we're going to seam our front and back panel together. So what we're going to do is place our front panel on top of our back panel, making sure that the single crochet row, the front of it, is faced in on itself because we want all of our seams to be along the inside. Then from here, we're going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure, and we're just going to do a single crochet seam. So to do the first one, we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and if you don't want to weave in your tail ends, place your tail ends over your hook, and then single crochet around everything. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, single crochet, and we're just going to continue on with this until we reach our stitch marker that we have within the front panel. Once we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. Alrighty, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming our shoulders, now we're going to seam our sides. So first things first, what we're all going to do is make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning all the seams that we did for the shoulder is still along the outside. Then we're going to insert our stitch marker into any stitch from the top that is in multiples of three, the width that we'd like for our sleeve to be. So I'm going to be inserting my stitch marker into the 27th stitch from the top, that's roughly seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Then from here, we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then from here, we're going to do the same single crochet seam that we did for the shoulders. So we're going to pull our yarn through to a chain up of one to secure. Then start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, find that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook. I will be weaving in my tail ends as I go because I do not want to weave them in later and single crochet around everything. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue doing this until we reach our stitch marker. Once we do, do a chain up of one end cut, repeat on the other side, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the length of our sleeve. Alrighty, so we are back. We have finished up seaming both of our sides, and now we're going to get started on our sleeve. So first things first, getting started on our sleeve, we're going to start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning all of our seams are along the inside. Then we're going to insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam, and then we're going to make an odd number chain the length that we like for our sleeve to be. Now you can make this short, three quarter, or full length. That's completely up to you. I would like for my sleeves to be long. So I made a chain of 57, and that's a total of 16 inches or 40 centimeters. And once we have our chain, we're going to do our stitches all the way down. And it's going to be done exactly the same way as the body. So I'm just going to do the first two with you guys. So once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain three. Then we're going to yarn over. Insert your hook into that second chain from our hook pull through for three loops into that following chain, pull up a loop for four. Then we're going to skip that following and into the next, pull up a loop for five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five, chain one to finish off this stitch. Now to do our next one, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the back bump of that chain that we just made, into the last stitch that our previous marguerite stitch was worked into, so that occupied stitch, pull through for four loops, skip a stitch, and then into the next, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, pull through all five, chain one to complete the stitch, 
and continue on with this marguerite stitch making our way all the way down remembering that the last stitch that we're going to do will not end with a chain all right so we are back we've made our way all the way down with our first row now we're all going to connect it into the base together so how we're going to do that we're going to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out right side up then we're going to count out the next two stitches into the base so here's one here's two into that second stitch into the base we're going to insert with a slip stitch to close off our row one then in order to work our way up to the following row we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base none of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch that's just to connect our rows and then we're going to flip our work and now what we're going to do from here is our first marguerite stitch so for the front and back panel, when we were getting started on our following marguerite stitch, we did a chain three, flipped our work, and then we pulled up a loop into that second and third chain from our hook. We're going to do pretty much the same thing, but now we're just going to pull up a loop into those two slip stitches that we made into the base. I know I said that they don't count as stitches, which technically they don't. They're kind of acting as our turning chain, but we're just going to get this started together. So we have slip stitch into those two stitches into the base, flipped our work, then we're going to yarn over, then we're going to insert our hook into that first slip stitch into the base and pull through for three loops on our hook then into that next slip stitch into the base we're going to insert our hook in through there as well pull through for one two three four loops on our hook then from here we should be working into those stitches that we made from a previous row so just like before we're going to skip that following stitch and then into the next we're going to insert pull through for one two three four five loops on our hook then yarn over pull through all five and then to close off this first marguerite stitch chain one and then the rest of our marguerite stitches are going to be the same way that we've done pretty much all the other ones remembering that that last one still isn't closed off with a chain when we pull through all five we're going to chain three flip our work and then do our regular marguerite stitches all the way back down and then i'll meet you back at the base so we can connect it again Alrighty, so we are back we all have our first one two three rows complete now we're going to connect it into the base together just once more so what we're going to do from here just like how we did our row one we're going to count up the next two available stitches so here's one here's two into that second stitch into the base we're going to insert with a slip stitch to close off this row then we might as well work our way up to the following row together so slip stitch into that following stitch into the base as well and now we're going to flip our work just to get started on the following row together now, whenever we're along the base working our way out the first one is going to be done just a little bit differently but pretty much the same idea so we're going to yarn over start by inserting your hook into that first stitch that we have that's worked into the base we're going to insert and pull through for three loops on our hook then into that next slip stitch that we have into the base we're going to insert and pull through for four loops on our hook then skip the following stitch and into the next pull through for five loops and from here it's going to be the same so yarn over pull through all five chain one to secure and then make your way down with the rest of our marguerite stitches from here we're actually just going to repeat our two previous rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases we're going to make our way all the way around and when we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into i'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all together and just as one last really quick tip each of our rows should have the same amount of stitches as original chains that we made Alrighty, so we are back. We have made our way all the way around with the entirety of our sleeve. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam it all up. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is slipped wrong side out so that all of our seams can be along the same side. Then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now this seam is going to be done pretty much the same way as these shoulders and the sides, so just a regular single crochet seam. So we're just going to single crochet, making sure we're working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back to get started on the cuff. Alright, so we are back. Our sleeve is all seamed up, now we're ready to get started on our cuff. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out now, meaning all of our seams are along the inside. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the edge of our sleeve. Then we're going to do a single crochet row, so go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook. Once we have that, we're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and then we're going to do a single crochet row, just putting one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding our first side row, and this is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook. 
and insert with just one single crochet so far. Then I'm going to find my following side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with one single. Let's do this again. This is my following side row. Find that top loop and insert with a single. This is my following one. Insert into that top loop with another single crochet and that's it. We're all going to continue on with our single crochet row, just putting one single crochet into every side row. When we've made our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and we should end up with the same amount of stitches as rows that we have for our sleeve. Alright, so we're back. Our single crochet row along the bottom of our sleeve is complete, and now we're going to get started on the length of our cuff. So right after we slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to make a chain the length that we like for our cuff to be. Now I would like for mine to be roughly 2.5 inches or 6 centimeters, so I went ahead and made a chain of 12, and now we're going to do a slip stitch row back down. So we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So go ahead and insert your hook. Then yarn over and gently pull through both loops on our hook. So there is one and then there's two. Let's do this again. Into that next chain, insert your hook yarn over and gently pull through both. Let's do this once more into that next chain insert, pull through both. And we're going to continue on with this, making our way all the way down our chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row is going to be a little too tight to work into. So we've made our way all the way down with our slip stitch row. Now we're going to connect it into the base. So all we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base and slip stitch into there to connect this first row. Then, to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base. None of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch and flip our work. And now we're going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So starting with inserting our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, not into any of those slip stitches into the base, we're going to insert into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Then yarn over and gently pull through everything again into that next stitch's back loop insert and pull through everything and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When you reach the end of the row, chain one, flip your work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again and then I'll meet you back at the base to connect it just once more. All right, so we are back. We should all have one, two, three rows completed and we're just going to connect it into the base together once more. So start by finding that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, to connect this odd number row and that slip stitch into the base does not actually count as a stitch. Then just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, still doesn't count as a stitch, flip our work and then again one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I'll meet you back so we can seam it all together. Alrighty, so we are back. We have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam everything together. Now for this seam, it's actually going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, just to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row, so we do not need to flip our work. All we're going to do is insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Then we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and inserting only in through that front loop. Then finding that next stitch into the back panel, inserting only into that back loop. When we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert only in through that front loop. Into the next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop. Then yarn over, pull through all three, and that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we did here on the other side. All right, so we are back. Both of our sleeves and cuffs are completed, and now we're ready to get started on the bottom band. So first things first, we're going to make sure the work is still flipped right side out. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of our side rows that we have along the bottom of our piece. Then we're going to do a single crochet row and it is going to be alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. So we already know how to do this part. 
we are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then just to get started on this together, we're all gonna start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Then this is my following side row. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop with two single crochets. So there's one, and then that same top loop, there's two, and that's it. We're gonna continue on with this, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space so we don't have any more side rows left to work into. All right, so we are back. Our single crochet row along the bottom is complete, and now for the bottom, we're gonna be doing more back loop slip stitch rows. So the bottom band is actually gonna be done exactly the same way as our cuff, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it. Right after we have slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our bottom band to be. Now I would like for mine to be just about two and a half inches or six centimeters, which is exactly the same that I did for the cuff, but yours can be shorter or longer. That's completely up to you. Then we're going to do a slip stitch row, connect it into the base the same way that we did for the cuff, and then do more back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all together. All right, so we are back. Our bottom band is complete. Now all we're going to do from here is seam it up and this is going to be the same exact seam that we did for the cuff as well. So another back loop slip stitch seam. So since we already know how to do that, I'm just going to talk you guys through it. So we're gonna start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch in the front panel, first stitch into the back panel. Then we're going to do our outside loop slip stitch seam until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the collar. So we are back. Our bottom band is completely seamed up and now the last thing we're going to do is get started on our collar. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to insert our same hook into our right stitch marker stitches front loop. We wanna make sure that we're all inserting it into the right one because the rows that we're about to do are not reversible. And then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. We are then going to pull through and do a chain three. Now the chain three counts as a stitch, but only for this row. Then working our way towards the left across the base of our collar, we're gonna be putting one front loop double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over. Into that next stitch, we're gonna take a look at that top loop. We're going to insert our hook into that loop that's nearest to us with a double crochet. Again, into that next stitch, yarn over, into the front loop only, one front loop double crochet into every stitch until we're worked into our following stitch marker stitch. Alrighty, my first row is complete. Now we're going to connect it into the base. So all we're gonna do is count up the next two available stitches into the base. So here's one, which is the stitch that's nearest to my stitch marker stitch, and then counting upwards, here's two. Into that second stitch, insert with a slip stitch. Now remember that that slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Then my following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So into that next stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch. Now we're gonna flip our work. Now from here, we're gonna put one back loop slip into every stitch. So finding the last stitch from our previous row, not those slip stitches into the base, we're gonna insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. Again, next stitch is back loop, pull through everything and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Remember not to tug too tightly after every stitch. Otherwise, the falling row can be too tight to work into. And also don't forget to do your last back loop slip stitch into the top of that chain three. But now that our row two is complete, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So just to get that started, we're gonna chain three and flip. So getting started on our row three, it's going to be back loop double crochets. So just put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. Connect it into the base the same way that we just did or the, actually the same way that we connected our work into the base for the sleeves and then a back loop slip stitch row. We're just gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way up and over. Well, we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it up to those back loops that we left for ourselves. Alrighty, so we are back. We've made our way all the way around with our collar. We are now going to seam it together. So I went ahead and actually already flipped my work wrong side out, that's why you're seeing the back side of our stitches right now. But all we're gonna do is the same single crochet seam that we did for the shoulder and the sides and the sleeves. So how that's gonna work is, we're gonna start by inserting our hook into the stitch marker stitch if you're along the outside like me, and then do a single crochet seam. But if you ended along the base, 
insert your hook into this stitch marker stitch and then still do a single crochet seam. We're just going to continue on with that and when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back. Our collar is complete and now we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one. Bye.